Welcome back to more of Let's Play EG, everybody. My name is Bright Roar, your host, and this is Sector 5 Genocide. So with that dead body, let's go ahead and get things rolling. Welcome to Sector 5, everybody, one of the most action-packed stages of EG and definitely one of my favorite levels of the game. And that's because it's the first time we get to see the Kamado and Tazin go at it, and the results are rather explosive to say the least. In the sector intro alone, we've already murdered about 10 aliens, and that's just a little taste of what's to come. But right now though, we're gonna go ahead and raid the storage area for some ammo, and then head on up that lift. And that's when things will really start picking up. So as EG heads deeper into the Kamado and Tazan conflict, she's gonna find herself in increased crossfire, and that changes the rules of the game. And the big thing about that is, the Kamado and Tazan will always prioritize each other over EG. So for example, I can plug this trooper in the back and he just will not get it down. He's much too concerned with those scouts over there than to bother with me. And that's a good and bad thing in my opinion. The good thing about it is, it's kind of awesome, and the entire sector is designed around taking advantage of those situations. On the other hand though, I think the system could have been handled a little better, especially since the Kamado and Tazan will never shift their priorities away from each other to EG, even if she's about to straight up murder them all. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, and I just think it could have been handled a little more gracefully. Otherwise though, it's pretty fun, and I love watching the battles play out, especially since there's that random element. Uh, none of the fights are predetermined, and it's always kind of cool to see the underdog come out on top. That is, until you uh, decide to murder them. So we have a fairly wide array of weapons, and in fact we have over half of them by now. But uh, I'm going to be falling back on the rocket launcher and MPFB devastator quite a bit, because just at this point in time, they're the strongest weapons we have, and it kind of makes short work of everything. So over to our left is another nano overload, and one of the few that I never bother going for. And that's because not only is it a pain in the ass to get, but you don't get a lot of mileage out of it, actually because that trooper ends up murdering all those scouts pretty quick, and by the time you get over here, well, you basically run out of it. A little worthless in my opinion, but oh well. Also, those are some very nice glass ceilings, but apparently they don't do anything. A new enemy is normally supposed to bust on down in dramatic fashion, but he showed up late for some reason, and I don't know what he was doing, maybe he was hungover, it was recently new star turns after all, but uh, he doesn't last too long. That was the Kamado Berserker, by the way, and you'll be seeing quite a bit of him throughout the game. So the Kamado Berserkers are some of the trickiest enemies in the game to deal with, and are probably the most difficult. And that's because not only do they have a bunch of HP, but the fact that they've got a Resonance Detonator, Resonance Reflector, and of course a Shock Splinter, just makes them a pain in the ass to deal with. Also, they explode when defeated, so there is that. Basically, just be careful when fighting them. So as you can see, beyond that door is a new gun, and while I would love to add that to my arsenal, the 
can't get it quite yet, we need a certain upgrade, so we'll be back here later. Also, I'd like to point out that that ship was extremely square. I don't know what's up with that. I guess the Kamado had a hard-on for rectangles or something. It's a little strange. Another battle going on down here. Doesn't look like it's going to turn out well for that Berserker. And indeed it doesn't. However, that makes my job that much easier. So a couple shots later... And everybody wins. And by everybody, I mean EG. So time to hop on down this ventilation shaft and activate this terminal to watch the fireworks happen. And it doesn't look like it's going to turn out well for you either, Commander. So now at this point, we need to activate two terminals, and that'll open a locked door. But that's boring, and it takes way too long in my opinion. So we're going to whip out our spread rockets that we've been saving up, and you know, just bust this cracked floor right here. And in effect, we have sequence broken the game. And if there's anything I've learned from Metroid Zero Mission, it's that intentional sequence breaking means fun times. So check out all those blitz, they're still nasty little bastards, however, they're going to come in handy shortly. Because as you'll see, I almost didn't take out this commander. One misfired shot, put him in the melee attack for me, but nope, that little blit right there. He finished that guy off, he saved the day, so good on you blit, you're kind of awesome. Alrighty, from here we need to activate a Tazen terminal, but there's also one other thing we're going to check out. And if you remember from Sector 3, I told you to keep a certain logbook in mind, so that's to give you a little hint as to what's to come. But first things first, of course, we need to crack this terminal. And so this isn't hell, it's only level 1 security, and that opens a locked door. So that is in fact the Tazan soldier from Sector 3 who is looking for her girlfriend, and we'll be following that subplot till the end of the game. It's pretty interesting in my opinion, and it does have a little effect on the story. But right now, more murdering, and that Tazan soldier, he just didn't know what the hell was going on. But this elite right here, a little tougher, took a little more damage, but not too bad. Also, one thing I didn't mention about the Berserkers exploding, there is actually a story reason for that. It's not just a arbitrary game element. In fact, the Kamado do not want the Tazen to reverse engineer the armor and technology of the Berserker, so they have a self-destruct sequence on them. Kind of like the frogs in Metal Gear Solid 4, and I'm always loving that, uh, you know, little gameplay consistency. Kind of neat. So, of course, we're in another storage area, and that means we're going to raid it. There's a lot of mana here, and there's also a lot of Devastator ammo. So we're going to pick that up real quick. But there's one other thing here that's a little more valuable, and that is the final jump upgrade. And it's guarded only by a level 1 security door, so let's go grab our reward. So now EG has the ability to jump about 20 feet in the air, two stories tall. And it's a little tough to get used to, but not too bad. And we're going to drop some points into Kamado and Crack. And if you remember that gun I told you about, well, we're going to head back to that carrier and go grab that. 
So now with our jump upgrade, we can climb up the side and slip on down through this hole. And our reward is the Shock Splinter. And the reason we grab that is to crack some more weapons. So first up is a combination of the Rocket Launcher and MPFE Devastator. At Crack 9, EG can create the Nuke. So now she has a thermonuclear weapon at her disposal. This is a pretty good weapon, deals a lot of damage, and hits every enemy on the screen. I don't use it a whole lot, but it's definitely one of the better weapons in the game. Next up is the Machine Gun and the Shock Splinter. You got Crack 7, you can go ahead and combine these to create the Splinter Gun. So most people agree this is kind of an awful weapon. In fact, many say it's the worst weapon in the game. I like it, though. I think it's quirky, and not that great, but it's fun to play around with. And finally, we're gonna combine the Pulse Cannon and the Shock Splinter. I'll go ahead and crack that with Crack 8. And that'll get us the Plasma Cannon. And this is THE game-breaking weapon. This is the polar opposite of the Splinter Gun. This is far non the best weapon in the game. All around. And unfortunately, we're towards the end of the sector, so I can't really show any of these all. But uh, believe you me, you're gonna see them in the next video, for sure. So now with our new upgrade, we're gonna head up this ventilation shaft. And, of course, we're going to collect another one of Maya's Ribbons. And with EG's resolve strengthened and her determination fortified, we're gonna head on up to the sector exit. It's more or less a straight shot, so see you there. Welcome to the second boss fight of EG with Kamado Assassin Asha. Now this guy is tough, and he is fast. Compared to the other enemies we've fought so far, he's on a completely different level. Now, he's gonna teleport around like a spastic little bastard and try and hit you with his laser knife and plasma cannon. So you gotta watch out for that. But the thing that makes him deadly is the fact that you can't hit him with any of your really powerful weapons. Rocket Launcher, MPFB, Devastator, those are all out of the question. We'll just teleport out of the way. You're gonna have to, you know, rely on some of your weaker weapons, such as the shotgun or machine gun, to take him out. So because of that, he's got a little bit of endurance. Now, typically, my main tactic for Asha is to minimize all my movements. The less you move, the better off you'll be. If you start running around like an idiot, He's just going to intercept you and knock you about, and that's not good for you. You also want to be able to recognize and predict his tells. Not only will you be able to dodge his attacks more efficiently, you also look kind of like a badass. Unlike me. Now he's got this weird sword brain attack as well. Uh, that really doesn't do anything, and you don't need to bother with that. 
but all of his other attacks will instantly hit you for one damage or more. Overall though, I really like the uh, Assassin Asha fight. It's tough, but fun. And with that, Asha falls. Of course, that fight never took place, though. That was, in fact, in an alternate timeline. And right now, EG just kind of sauntered in, you know, just strolling along casually, like it ain't no thing. And she proceeds to equip a certain weapon, and then, you know, just casually fire off a nuke. No big deal, right? And she'll collect her supercharge because of that. And that's all we've got for Sector 5. Thanks for watching. Hope you come back for Sector 6.